Come on, Richie, run him, buddy. You did that on purpose, Flash! No, but I should have. You better watch your back. All right. Well, give it up, Parker. Oh. One sec. Why did you take it from me? So I flash, take it, man. Go ahead, take it. About this. All right. About that. Come on, Flash. Flash, stop playing, man. Take it from him. Flash, take it. Yo, Flash. Let's go. Let's go. Do it, Flash. Stop playing, man. Let's go, Flash. Come on. Let's go. 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 let us I will be analysing the basketball scene from The Amazing Spider-Man. The scene is set into motion with an establishing shot. Conforming to convention, it is an exterior shot that indicates to audiences that the scene will take place somewhere within Midtown Science High School. This has been shot using a crane that moves over the sign to focus on the general hustle and bustle of people moving around the school. Given the fact that the setting is within the school's campus, it is implied to audiences that we will see Peter Parker rather than his alter ego Spider-Man. There is a straight cut to a series of wide long shots that capture the school's basketball team practicing. This choice of framing enables the audience to become familiarised with the internal location in which the scene will take place, the school's gymnasium. This is a highly conventional setting for events to take place for a film that contains elements of the high school drama genre. It also means that the movement and interaction of actors can be captured more appropriately and realistically, placing the audience within the shot as if they were standing in the room. The use of this framing also allows the audience to witness other events within the shot. For example, in this particular moment we can see cheerleaders in the background of the shot as well as Peter Parker. This connotes to the audience that at a later point within the scene these characters will be involved. The following shot is a close-up of a basketball rolling to knock over a pot of paint. This shot is also a cut on action. It follows the action of a ball being hit out of play by Flash and off-screen, shown in the previous shot. This makes an action that once seemed insignificant to the audience become their focal point. This implies to the audience that this event holds far more importance than initially thought, and that this action could be the start of a longer chain of events. There is a wide long shot used to show the girl's reaction to the paint getting knocked over. Instead of a medium close-up or a close-up of a female's face, which is typical for reaction shots, the girl is shown to be small and the framing of the shot could suggest to audiences her inferiority within the situation. The actor that plays this character is quite petite, and her costume, which includes what would be considered clothing that is unfashionable and glasses, suggests that she falls under the nerd stereotype, reinforcing the notion that she is deemed inferior. We then see Flash begin to walk into frame. This is a J-cut as the audience hears the character speak before they are shown to be doing so on screen. You did that on purpose, Flash! No, but I should have. You better watch your back. Then there is a cut on action to a medium close-up of Flash who continues to walk towards the character he is speaking to. This has partially been done to show the reaction of the character, but also maybe to imply to audiences that this character is more superior than the previous, as he is made more prominent in the scene by the use of a medium close-up rather than a long shot, like the one used for the female. The lighting within the scene has an on-screen source, the windows to the side of the gymnasium and the lights on the ceiling. Given that the windows are large, it would allow quite a lot of sunlight in, thus the direction of light used in the scene is side lighting. The lighting used is soft in order to make it appear more natural. The colour of the lighting is white, and this has most likely been done to replicate the lighting emitted from the lighting on the ceiling. The audience is shown a conversation between the girl and Peter Parker. This is cross-cut with shots of a basketball team playing. 
This infers to the audience that in this environment, the two characters speaking are insignificant when compared to their more athletic peers. This conforms to the stereotypical high school culture, in which the athletic students are deemed more worthy and interesting than others. This is represented through cross-cutting between the characters' scripted conversations and shots of the school's team. The characters within the scene all wear clothing typical of teenagers. The sports uniforms worn by the basketball team and cheerleaders could be used to suggest to audiences that they are of a higher status as they are part of what would be considered the jock stereotype. As typically within a teen drama genre, these characters have higher social ranking than their peers. Other characters wear basic clothing such as jeans and t-shirts. The colours of these outfits are quite neutral, often shades of brown, grey, dull blues and greens. This may have been done to show their insignificance in contrast to their brightly coloured peers, portraying them to be ordinary. Hair and makeup is kept simplistic. There is not a single person who stands out more than another. The cheerleader is visibly wearing mascara, however she does not wear much more than this. This has most likely been done because if she were to wear more it would look unrealistic as she is doing a reasonably physical activity. Throughout the clip, non-diegetic sound is used to create a certain atmosphere to the scene. Light-toned orchestral music is used within the scene and is used to show the light-hearted manner of the character as he is mocking his bully, showing that he is merely trying to have a bit of fun. Oh, Why don't you take it from me? Go ahead, take it. The music stops when Parker talks to Flash. This builds suspense as the silence in the room creates an uneasy, tense atmosphere. The music then starts to play again in the same tone when Parker starts to mess around. The music holds a slight smug tone. All right, how about this? All right, how about that? Parker's confrontation with Flash is predominantly composed of a series of two shots and shot reverse shot medium close ups of the characters. Throughout this series of shots, the 180 degree rule is followed in order to keep continuity within the shot. This creates authenticity to the conversation and makes it appear less staged. The use of two shots enables the audience to gauge the proximity between two characters, as the closeness of characters while talking can indicate many things, for example relationships or how comfortable characters are around each other. In this instance, the distance between characters suggests that they may be about to have a fight. The tone of voice Garfield uses in the interaction is joking yet slightly mocking. Alright, how about this? Alright? About that. Come on, Flash. Come on, Flash. Stop playing, man. Take it from me. Flash, take it. This has a polysemic meaning, as to his character, it is just a little bit of fun, and he sees no harm in the joke he is playing. However, to Flash, it is most likely very demeaning to be spoken to in such a manner, and is therefore causing him embarrassment. Garfield's performance portrays arrogance and could suggest to audiences that he is abusing his newfound powers and that he does not yet fully understand the extent of them. Audiences then see the final scene as Parker's karma as he essentially gets what he deserves for stooping to Flash's level. This reflects the overarching theme of the text, the idea that actions have consequences and in the words of Uncle Ben himself, with great power comes great responsibility. Foley is used to immerse the audience as it makes the scene more realistic. The audience feel as though they become part of the action and become captivated by what they are watching. That is why even the smallest sound can be important to the scene. Small diegetic sounds such as the squeak of shoes on the gymnasium floor, the sounds of movement and the ball hitting the ground are examples of this. Go ahead, take it. The music slows in pace at the point that Flash starts to get angry and has had enough. The music at this point is used so audiences feel the humiliation as he continues to get mocked. Alright, how about that? There's a lot of diegetic background noise within the scene, which consists of teenagers laughing, cheering and shouting as the boy is mocked. This helps to build believability within the scene as it is a common reaction of teenagers to make contributions to what is going on around them, especially in situations that they deem to be funny. I bring it! Come on, Parker! 
Without this diegetic sound, the scene would lack believability as the room would not be completely silent in a high school environment full of teenagers. When Parker is about to perform his stunt, there is a cutaway to the reaction shot of the cheerleader and her reaction to what is happening, which then cuts back to the stunt being performed. The music then stops again when Parker is flying through the air towards the basketball hoop. This is to show the spectator in the room, but also the audience's shock as to how high and far he has just jumped. There is a cut on action just before Parker reaches the net, and we then witness the movement from behind the backboard that is made of glass. The use of a glass backboard for this prop has been done in order to emphasise Parker's strength when it smashes when he makes contact with it. The scene then cuts away to another reaction shot of the cheerleader's gun popping in shock. This action is matched with the sound of the glass smashing to create an L cut. This is used to portray the girl and the audience's shock within the situation. The pop is the main sound that is heard in, within the moment and therefore emphasises the silence in the room at this point. It also keeps the scene light-hearted and slightly comical. There is then a straight cut to a close-up of Parker landing back on the ground, basketball net in hand, as the grass falls around his feet. This gives the action importance and signifies to the audience that this is the moment the scene has been building up to. There is two final straight cuts in the sequence that depict Flash and Parker's reactions to the events that have unfolded. It is interesting that in these shots, Flash is framed in a long shot and Parker is shown in a medium close-up. This comes back to the idea that the character that demands more of the audience's attention are recognised as being more important and possibly having higher status than the other, suggesting that Parker is superior to Flash.